This uh, is one of my Saskia Travis hives. Super well done. Brood chamber is, oh I've forgotten now, where the uh, queen excluder is right now. I think it's in these, it's just here. Right, uh, below the peak. So we've got one deep full of honey, two deeps, three mediums, and I actually took a, frame, a super of honey off here uh, last week because I couldn't lift it up onto here because it was too heavy, so I just put it on top of another hive. It was still full of bees. And these bees have been really calm. They've been great to work with, but they've been spectacular in terms of their honey production. So it'd be quite nice to breed from them. Now, I may have put an empty super on the top just to give them somewhat, something to do. First of all, let's dismantle this, and while we're here, we might take a bit of honey off as well. Okay, that one's only got about five pounds of honey in it. But these, if you have a look, there's just lots of wax up here, lots of bridging comb. This one filled up with honey very nicely. <laughs> Once again, I'm my job big. I got the good job here. I don't have to lift. That's full. That is, they normally hold 35 pounds of honey. That weighs considerably more than 35 pounds. <laughs> Likewise, this is full to the brim as well. Another medium. Absolutely stuffed with honey. A little easier if it's a little lower. Look at that, I don't know if you can see. Now the fun bit. Deeps absolutely stuffed with honey. Someone I might ask you to help me with this one. <laughs> <laughs> you take that sign, that sign, I'll take this sign, this sign, we'll just put it straight over there. Wow, look at that. Ready? What a great problem to have. Isn't it just? A honey super that's too heavy. And another one that's just stuffed with honey. time okay so now we're into the brood chamber here we go Let's see once you brood in there just a matter of interest I'd like to see what the weight of this is that is light this is all brood Wow that's amazing I can see a bit of honey on the sides but relatively speaking, this is nice and light. Plenty of honey on the edges. Brood and pollen. Predominantly older brood. 
because we've got quite a bit of a, uh, quite a large brood chamber to be amongst. Where you want it? Just put it down here on the pallet, it would be great. Mite treatment, it's almost done with this mite treatment. Is that the hot bird? Yes, it is. See empty cells, I don't see eggs in there yet. My the queen is not going to choose to lay right next to the hot guard early on as it feeds in strength. And they will. You see where the hop guard was, how the, yeah. the, they cleared it out because the bee, it, uh, the hop guard kills the bees underneath the hop guard, the brood. And considering we're in a dirt, no jumping bees, that's a thing. These yep. bees are as gentle as you can get them. And we're in deeply in the dirt right now. Look at that brood pattern. The other side is beautiful. And here's another reason why this queen is a good choice. <laughs> Look at that. On it. Strong, gentle queen. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. These are queen cups, not queen cells. Oh, some beautiful pollen in here. Look at the colors of that pollen in there. Just over there. So this, I say this is the mite treatment, the second round. This is the first treatment I put in. It's almost totally chewed up and been removed. This is the second treatment that was put in last week. Nice load of young larvae here. Do I have some that are just the right age? It would be on a frame that's got this on it. <laughs> now, now I said that when we put the mite treatment on it killed the brood so it would have killed the older brood here but very shortly thereafter this is all full of young larvae same age as these ones and these <coughs> ones here so they've really filled in it doesn't do a permanent damage to the frame it just killed the stuff initially and if this, the queen has very quickly replaced all these larvae. As I've said in other videos, it seems that the bees bounce back from a mite treatment with a, an extra surge of um, production of brood. Full of royal jelly. Lovely. My eyes were better. <laughs> we'll get one of those visors with the magnifying glass. Mm -hmm. yeah. Readers and work well too, but you just have to remember. As well. Here's our beautiful, beautiful Saskatchewan Queen. It's done so well for us here. Look how calm these bees are. Got the characteristics I want. The only thing that this hive is not tested is the overwintering. 
because this is not an overwintered hive. This was a, this was a nuke first thing this spring. Um, so it was a nuke I made in early May and it has grown and grown and grown. And just look what a nuke can do if it's start off early and you've got a good genetics. This colony has got 60, 120, another 70, 190 pounds of honey there, plus what's in here about 10, so 200 pounds of honey. And we're only at the first week of August. We haven't even had the fall flow yet. Wow. So it's a nuke this year produced 200 pounds of honey. Not bad. Not bad at all. Don't you love those Saskatrans? Love them. I love them, not even bothering you, Amy. They're not. If there's ever They're friendly. I'm the test. Amy, Amy's the litmus test. I am. How, it how probably helps that they're not at his place. This is true. Okay, um, Sean, I've got some empty supers in the high in the uh, truck. I'd like to bring those across. I'm going to try and take some of the honey off these these boxes. Um, at least one of them. Uh, how we're going to do it? <laughs> May take us a while. They're so high. Um, we're going to put an empty on. We know we've got a bit of honey in here. Thank you. We grab another. Let's even the frames out a little bit. There's an empty there. I'd help you, Peter, but you know, I, I'm running the camera. Yeah, thanks, Amy. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> okay, we'll put that down for a moment, Sean. Give hand trying to lift this one up. We'll try and get it up there. Then you find it easier to get a hand underneath. One, two, three, yep. Good. And you gloves up. Thank you. We'll put a fume board on that, and we can try putting a fume board on this separate stack as well. So we've got mm -hmm. two more fume boards going. So if uh, people weren't watching fume board use yesterday, you can watch what we're doing here. Right. right. So fume boards, if you haven't watched the other videos, are a fast way of getting bees uh, to leave a super. And so basically, I've got boards with cloth on. These are homemade versions. But, uh, I've got the normal one has like a felt material in here. And I'm spraying this this uh, material called Be Quick. It uh, drives the bees away from the from the fume board. Can you show them the, what it is you're using? Got some of that in stock right yep. now. Um, this one's nearly empty. Should have bought a fuller one. I've got another one here. There's one, some stuff down in there, Sean. I don't know. Mixing them up is probably. I can actually tell you what I'll do. Let's see if there's anything left in here. No. Oh, here's this. This is the stinky stuff. You're gonna get them on your nice new gloves, Peter. Yeah, I tell you what. I'm not even gonna fiddle about with those. With those I'll just. Uh, so this is another type, and this one stinks. So the other one this smells one kind of like bad. almonds. This one kind of is a combination between fish and licorice. The, the biggest way. thing difference between them is the temperatures in which they work. The bad smell, of course. Mm -hmm. That uh, bigo is not a good smell, but the other one does smell quite nice, mm -hmm. uh, almondy. But it also works at lower temperatures. So. Fume boards work really well in temperatures of the 80s. That's the thing, once you get down to the 70s, they work progressively slower and slower. Um, when they're in the 60s, you're wasting your time. Okay, so. We're gonna put the fume board on here. 
and the bees hate the smell, so they're gonna start running downhill. And when I can get at least one super of honey off here, we'll drive the bees down into the lower supers, and uh, then we can empty it out. Now, we can do the same thing, only drive them into a smaller super down here. There's, uh, there's no queen or anything in these bees to worry about. The queen here, we know is way down here. So but in the meantime, we yep. put our fume board onto two other hives over here, which are also quite large. They're actually starting to drive them right down to the entrance here. Um, so that it, you can, if you leave it on for too long, drive them right out of the hive. Um, but we've got the vast majority of the bees out of the super. These supers did have a lot of bees on before. So let's see what we've got now. That's 90% emptied of bees. We've got a cluster of bees in the middle between those two frames. We've got a funky comb. And we'll put this back on here. See if we can drive them out of that super as well while we're here. Okay, we'll put this in the truck. Ooh, ah. Excuse me. Not quite as full as the other one. <laughs> Got some honey to take off over here, hopefully. <laughs> That's ninety percent out. You can see some there. Uh, There's a little cluster on the end, yeah. There you go. Knock truck. knock. I don't like that too much. Yep, again, the edges, it works well down the middle usually. The edges are still not quite the. got all the bees out yet, but I'll try a bit more. Look at them coming out. Oh yeah. There's a lot of bees in the hive to this, and then. Of course, what we need to do is replace it. But we'll see. We do have to make sure we leave some honey for them. What I can always do is give them one of these. Because that one, we probably, I doubt we're going to get both of those off. Look, that's already driven them almost all out. You want to take this box on? Heavy, huh? <coughs> <laughs> just uh, while we're taking these honey supers off I just wanted to point out here's some honey that was long term storage it's all capped honey here but then immediately going to torn up frames torn up cappings and dry cells this was a super just above the brood chamber and they've been taking coming up to the upper stores and taking it downstairs so they've actually been um, raiding the longer term larder up here and moving it down into the brood chamber. So it's just, just a clear sign that the bees are currently using up their stores. And uh, if you want a lot of honey, it's best to grab it now and feed them sugar syrup. Because sugar syrup is still a perfectly good feed for your bees. But if you want to harvest honey uh, and they produce a fair amount over the over the early summer, get it off now because they're going to take it off and feed it to their larvae unless you replace it with something like sugar syrup. So uh, the fume boards work pretty well, but there's some bees left in here, so I'm shaking off what we have here so uh, we can get away. So, Peter, when you say feeding them the sugar syrup, 
one to one, two to one. One to one sugar syrup. The later in the season you get, the more towards two to one you'd probably go. Yeah. So definitely in the fall feeding, you're at the two to yeah. one. Yeah, once we're into next month, we'll definitely be feeding with just two to one. Right now, we're feeding one to one, maybe, maybe one and a half to one. Yeah. I should have my bee brush, but I didn't come prepared <laughs> with that. All right. I'll leave for a second, Sean.